person needs to see travel.
Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Morning Star Lutheran Church. We are very glad that you're here today as we celebrate All Saints Sunday. We gather together with, with Christians around the world to, uh, to celebrate the life of faith that has been lived out by those who have already gone before us, to celebrate the lives of faith and the image of God in the people around us, and to prepare for the generations yet to come. As we are uh, sharing this morning's worship, whether you're in person or with us online, you are welcome. Please make sure you do fill out that small information card that is in your bulletin each and every week. We ask that you fill those out if you are a member or a guest or family from out of town. No matter how you got here, please fill that out and put that in the offering plate. I'm getting some feedback there. Thank you very much for taking care of that. It's kind of echoing. As we uh, begin our service this morning, uh, we hope that perhaps you have noticed a new uh, piece of art. It's an art installation that's out in, the, um, out in the rain garden as you come by to enter into the worship center. And Steve Lytle has a moment about that piece of wonderful art. During this month of celebration of Native American heritage, <clears throat> we join with the North Carolina Synod in an act of holy remembrance at the call of the ELCA American Indian and Native, Amer Native Alaska Native Association. With our Native American siblings, we remember the more than 215 children from the Rosebud Nation, or more properly, the Sikangu Lakota Oyate Nation. Their remains were recently found at the Kamloops Residential School in South Central British Columbia. The art installation, created by Tom Yor and Amelia Osborne, now on display in the rain garden beside the worship center, honors the memory of those children. <clears throat> you might have noticed the orange fabric displayed on the installation. It's symbolic to recognize the loss of self-identity and self-esteem that children attending these mission schools faced. The fabric came from the inspiration of a survivor of that era, Phyllis Webstad. When Ms. Webstad was a six-year-old girl arriving at a residential boarding school in 1973, she was stripped of her clothes, which included a new orange blouse that her grandmother had gifted her. The orange shirt was never given back. The installation will remain in place for 225 days. During this journey, we will continue to share ways in which we can walk the path towards a greater understanding of our interaction with indigenous people as a culture, as the church in what has now become the United States, and even as a congregation in this place for more than 240 years. Today, on this observance of All Saints Day, let us say a prayer for the children who did not return home. Almighty God, we remember before you all the children who did not return home for the residential schools. May you remember their suffering and pain. May you grant them rest in the land of peace. May you surround them with beautiful and sacred love and joy. We pray to you also for ourselves and our children. At a time like this, we remember that we need your spirit so very much. We pray to you your spirit prays through us in the name of Jesus, who suffered with us but raised us and will raise us with our departed loved ones. Amen. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another, either sitting or kneeling, as you are able. <clears throat> Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sins for Jesus' sake and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. Please stand for our gathering hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our Kyrie and our Canticle of Praise are on ELW page 120, if you're not already there. 120 in the front portion of your hymnal. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all 
and defend us, gracious Lord. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to today's readings. The first reading comes from Isaiah, the 25th chapter. Isaiah sees a vision of the end of days when God will gather all people on God's holy mountain and will prepare for them a rich feast. At this banquet, God will wipe the tears from all eyes and there will be no more sorrow, for God will destroy death itself. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all the peoples, the sheet that is spread over all the nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 
The second reading comes from the 21st chapter of Revelation. Here is a vision of the new heaven and new earth in which God resides fully with God's people so that mourning, despair, and pain have been eradicated. These renewing words from the God who spans all of time are trustworthy and true. A reading from Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. gospel for this All Saints Sunday comes to us from the gospel of St. John the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. And so the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Well, then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? And so they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and his feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregations, welcome to be seated. We'd like to invite the children who are with us today, fifth grade and below, come on up front for a minute of sharing with Deacon Wendy Roberts. I have no idea where you're going to sit today or where you're going to stand, so we'll let her figure it out. She's got her mic. Let's see. Where shall we go? Well, you guys have favored this side. I'm okay with that. So let's just squish up over here. This is a wonderful problem to have. We have no place to sit. Oh my goodness, why, why do we have no place to sit today? Do you guys know what this is? 
It's bags. <laughs> yeah. Bags. Filled with what? What's inside all these bags? Food. Yes. And Christian, I hear you really like to eat, so this might be making you a little hungry. I know. It's making me hungry as I look and see all the deliciousness. Wow, these are meals that we are going to share with our community, mainly for folks uh, right in our neighborhood schools at Lebanon Road, Mint Hill Middle School, maybe Queens Grant, um, folks who might not otherwise be able to have a nice Thanksgiving meal on their table, so we are going to help support that through these meals. And this is just wonderful. I just thank you all so much for your generosity. This is so uh, humbling to see it all gathered here. And, but besides bags of all this food, what else do we have up here that we don't always have every Sunday? Quilts. And your Nana quilts, right? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Isn't that amazing? Aren't these beautiful? These are so amazing, and they're soft and warm. Oh, my goodness, and they're fluffy, and I love the colors. And do you know that this is just a tiny portion of quilts? Because most of them are already boxed up in the Family Life Center. Like, we have a 100 or so of these quilts. So this is just a little representation of that. But this is one of my favorite Sundays of the year, where we stand back and we look and we see all of these amazing things. And what I love about it is it's not just this one Sunday, right? This one Sunday shows us the things that are happening every single day of the year here at Morningstar. But we get to see it today because every day these things are happening quietly in the background and people don't even know it. Folks are working on these quilts and coming in and out of the worship center if you're ever or in and out of the gym if you're ever here in the building. You see them coming in and out and gathering supplies and bringing things back. And I see people coming in and out of the building making meals all year long. These are holiday meal bags, but we have meals going to the men's shelter all year long. And we have room in the inn that we're getting ready to come back for this winter and we'll be offering that throughout the winter and even during covid in addition to the men's shelter we were offering meals for room in the inn guests at the overflow shelters and all year long we collect food for matthew's help center this is just a symbol of the ministry that happens every single day through the gifts of our hands and i think it's fantastic and I love the ways that you guys help with these things because I know that you're helping to collect meals and some of you are packing cookies and doing all kinds of wonderful things to celebrate and to lift up others in our world and to share God's love. So I would like for you guys to help me to bless these. Can, can you do that? You can either stand up and we can spread out and either touch a bag or a quilt. Go ahead. If you all stand, you can, there's some quilts right here. There's bags over here. Whichever one you feel like calls your name. Do you want to come here, Amberlyn? Come on, y'all. You can help me. You can just reach out, Christina. Yeah, there we go. And I invite folks in the congregation, since you guys can't touch everything, raise your hands up in sign of offering, because I know that we are all offering gifts of our ministry in different ways as well. Let us bless these gifts. God of love, thank you for the love that has been poured into these bags of love, of meals, and these quilts. Lord, we give you thanks for the gifts of our hands, for the ways that you stir our hearts to share your love with our world. Thank you, God, for giving us the gifts and the abilities to participate in different ways, to feed our neighbors, to offer shelter, to our global neighbors, and to our local community as well. Lord, we ask a special blessing upon those who receive these gifts. May those who receive these quilts feel their warmth. May they feel wrapped in the prayers with which they have been created. May they feel your love holding them close and wrapping them tight. Lord, may our neighbors who receive these meals be nourished in their hearts, be nourished in their bodies. 
Lord, may they no longer experience the sorrow of an empty table, and may they be fed and filled beyond the food and be filled with your love and your hope. Lord, we lift all these things up as a sign of your love to us, and we ask that you continue to empower us to share our gifts each and every day of the year with our world. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for helping me to bless these gifts. Oh, what a blessing. Thank you, guys. A sincere word of thanks. If you were able to do a little extra shopping, actually, that's quite an understatement. If you were able to do a lot of extra shopping, thank you. Um, we again thank uh, the folks who were able to even make our bags that were so large. Um, you know, the bags you get from the food store nowadays couldn't have hoped to contain all this food. And so um, Cindy Fliss, I think, put a lot of these together. And some other helpers, I think Whitney Freeburn helped. And maybe a few other folks as well. And I'm sorry if I'm not getting all the names right. But what a wonderful, neat way to show uh, your compassion for neighbors. Today is All Saints Sunday, and we don't make any bones about what today means. All Saints Sunday is the day that we as the Christian church now remember and celebrate all the saints that have been a part of God's family. We think about those, not only the saints uh, that gather around us in the pews, but in a real poignant and powerful way, we remember the saints who have gone before us. This is the type of day where you might hear um, phrases like the church militant and the church triumphant, which we very rarely use on a normal Sunday or on a normal Tuesday anyway. The church militant is the church that is still active. In other words, you and I today, we are the church that is striving, that is serving, that is searching, that is, you know, doing God's work. The church militant is here on earth, alive and breathing. And the church triumphant is the church that we would say is at rest. The church, the members who have gone before us and who now rest from their labors. They are our beloved dead. It doesn't mean we glorify death. This is not what today is about. Today is about giving honor and and showing our love for those who have gone before us because of who they have been made through Jesus Christ. It could be a day, and I'll be honest, when we think of our blessed dead, sometimes it's easy to remember them in a certain way. My grandmother, Grandma Ruth, Ruth Henson, she gave the best hugs. She was about this tall, so she was built for hugging. It was just poof, right around the middle, you know? She was from Chicago, and she and my grandpa, uh, who has also passed, Grandpa John, well, I have such fond memories of them. And some of the things I remember are the things that when I was 10 and 12 and 14 years old, sometimes I kind of went, oh. My grandpa was the kind of guy, God bless him, who on a Tuesday afternoon would be wearing a pair of lime green polyester pants with very white patent leather shoes and a white patent leather belt. He was a very sharp dresser, my grandpa from Chicago. And now I look back on it and I smile because that's who he was. But you know, when you're going to the food store uh, with your grandpa, you're kind of going, oh boy. Now, he might have been doing that to me. I'm with this 13, 14-year-old kid who just, oh boy. So it comes and goes fairly. But, and my grandma, God bless her, Grandma Ruth, who gives the best hugs. She would also be the one who would open the can of Lesseur peas when it was time to make dinner and would put the, the, the peas in the, in the stove on the, on the pan and then would hit it on high for 20 minutes. <laughs> because you have to cook every pea, you know that. But you also know that Lesseur peas coming out of the can are already quite well done. So y you have that blend, don't you? And sometimes we can laugh about those blendings of the beloved memories, but also there's those memories that are harder to make peace with. There are memories of our blessed dead that are more close to home painful. 
Grandpa might have been a wonderful man until, until he had a drink or two too many or until he got frustrated. Grandma might have been loving to one part of the family but had nothing but offhanded remarks for the other side of the family. You understand this, don't you? Because you've been a part of families and you are a part of a family now. It doesn't mean they're any less beloved. But it also shows that life and even death can be a tough combination sometimes. Into this tough combination comes Jesus. We see him in our gospel lesson for this morning coming to literally the grave of his friend Lazarus. Lazarus, Mary, and Martha are a family, two sisters and a brother, and Lazarus has died. And Jesus is going to the tomb and he sees that they are weeping and they are mourning, they are in pain. And it says in our scripture that Jesus becomes greatly disturbed and that kind of doesn't do justice to it. Jesus was more like racked. Jesus was torn apart by what he was seeing and experiencing. Probably lots of reasons for that. Jesus, as the Son of God, knowing all things, knew that one day he would himself would be put behind a stone and laid into a tomb. I'm sure he felt that. Thinking about the loss of loved ones and friends is never easy for anyone. And Jesus, being fully human as well as fully divine, surely felt that. He also knew that that stone closing over his friend Lazarus was just an example of the same sort of separation that every single family on God's green earth has felt or will feel. And Jesus knew that this was not to be the end for God's children. All these emotions coming up. And so Jesus says, roll the stone, get the stone out. And even in the face of, of utter reality of, of Lazarus' death, Jesus, his sister says, um, I don't think you want to do that. He's been dead four days now. It, it's way too long. And it's not even going to be it's not going to be pleasant. It's going to be awful. And, and I'd really rather you didn't. What a wonderful um, and interesting thing Jesus responds to, to Martha with. He says, did I not tell you that if you believe, you see the glory of God? Think about it. In our gospel lesson for this morning, Jesus says, okay, if you believe, you'll see the glory of God. And, and where is he making this statement from? He's making it at the entrance of an open, literally smelly tomb. He is saying the glory of God is going to be visible to you right here where death has already won. Lazarus is dead. Nobody is arguing that fact. But in this stinky, horrible heartbreaking place, the glory of God will come. Lazarus, come out. And he does. It's not that Jesus only loved Lazarus so much, but it's that Jesus loves all of God's children that much. That Jesus and our Creator God does not want the grave to be the last place that we find our loved ones. Yes, this is an experience that each person born of this earth will have to be a part of, but it does not mean our end, and it is not the conclusion of our story. Remember I told you that sometimes on All Saints Sunday we have a tough time with, with the complications of life. In our own relationships we know this, as Steve was reminding us that November is the beginning of Indigenous Peoples Month and the ELCA, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and the North Carolina Synod are paying very close attention to acts of remembrance and trying to be thoughtful about the complications that life often brings and sometimes we're involved in as a culture or as a church or as people. This act of remembrance was brought about when 215 graves were found outside of a school. It's a school up in, in British Columbia where children were taken from their homes and families. These are 
indigenous children, we would say Native American or Indian in the days gone by, and we, and we felt, we felt, that it was best if, if they were taken away from that savagery of their culture and, and they were taught how to be people. And their clothes were taken and their names were taken and their language was taken and their celebrations were taken and to remember their ancestors like we're doing today would have been seen as forbidden and wrong and pagan and stupid. And at this one school in British Columbia, they found 215 unmarked graves of children who had died at school. Do you often hear of children dying in school just because? But yet there's 215 unmarked graves outside this school. And after that was found, over in Saskatchewan, there was another school. You didn't hear about this quite as much, but over 700 graves were found outside that school. 150,000 children if not more, were put into these schools. And some died without their parents or their grandparents or their siblings at their side. See, the thing is, um, All Saints Sunday is not just to remember the saints that have gone before us, our blessed Grandma Ruths and Grandpa Johns, but also those who have died with no one by their side, whose graves were unmarked, whose graves were stink and rotten with death. Again, this is complicated because Christ walks and comes into a complicated world where we have love and we also have the pain of, of seeing some other people, not as children of God or children of the Creator, but as other. Look around the news, you see trials and there's there's men on trial for shooting a jogger in a neighborhood well he wasn't a jogger in the neighborhood he was a he was a thief he was a robber which he wasn't see so you don't even see that person as a person you see them as a category in need of punishment death on the side of a road So sometimes the graves are in the side of hills with a stone in front, and sometimes the graves are next to a school in the middle of British Columbia, and sometimes the graves are down at a little white chapel off Idlewild Road, and sometimes the graves are in a ditch on the side of the road. So where's the glory of God? In all those places. Because if God sits on his throne in heaven with angels and archangels and cherubim and seraphim singing around him with all his glory, then we are sunk. If he stays there, we're done. But instead we have Jesus who walks into our world and is racked by what he sees and what he, he knows that we are experiencing. And he cries out, come out. My, my blessed dead are safe today. They're, they're not lost. They're, they're with God. But I also have to be mindful about those, those blessed dead that I didn't give a fig about when they were alive. And part of the challenge for All Saints Sunday for me, and I would offer for you as well probably as the church and as individuals in it, is to see not just the people I love as the saints, but the people I don't know as the saints. And by the people, frankly, I don't like as the saints. And I can make a joke here about, you know, if you root for this team or that team, but that's kind of blasé, isn't it? Those people. You know, we all have those people. They're saints too. Well, they don't go to church. Yeah, but as your mom would say, you know, coming to church doesn't make you Christian any more than putting a cat in the oven makes it a biscuit, right? You've heard that. I'm not trying to make a downer on this. But I'm saying if Jesus was racked by the pain of death and the anguish of loss, then maybe we should be too, especially when it's for the other. 
we know that we are embraced by God's love and that gives us solace. I've been to too many family members' gravesides not to know and appreciate and celebrate the, the embrace of God's grace and promise of eternal life, but to then not think that that should extend to somebody else, if I don't believe that, then I'm not getting the story straight. I like this feeling when God draws me close. Part of our calling as a church is to make sure that every child feels that embrace. And every senior who is by themselves in a quiet house feels that embrace. And every young adult that is trying to figure out their way in this world feels that embrace. Everyone who has by their own actions or by the actions of others has been cut aside from society needs to feel that embrace because they are saints as well. And the church should be at peace because of Christ's presence right here, right now. He has been and will always be there for us. Best part is, it's not only at our deaths, it is for our whole lives as well. Amen. Our hymn of the day is hymn 531, 531. It's in the back portion of your red hymnal. 531 is the trumpet sound, the angels sing. I invite you to rise as we sing our hymn together. 531. There is an occasion where on some of our holy days we step aside from the Apostles' Creed and we use the Nicene Creed as our affirmation of faith and today is such a day and I'll give you a moment to turn to page 126 in the front portion of your Evangelical Lutheran worship. Page 126 is where you'll find the Nicene Creed. It's a little bit longer than the Apostles and so if you had it memorized, good on you. <laughs> but just so you don't get lost as the rest of us work it through. The Nicene Creed is found on page 126, and that is our confession of faith this morning. I invite you to pray along with me. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, 
and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. Merciful God, we give thanks for all missionaries who have brought your message of hope to new communities and wiped tears away. Continue to raise up courageous missionaries to share your gospel of hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, we praise you for abundant harvests and the beauty of creation. Create communities of care so that your earth and all land, water, and soil will be celebrated and cherished by future generations of saints. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of peace, we give you thanks for nations of peace that serve as a refuge for all whose homeless lands are afflicted with violence. Strengthen those who continue to work for peace and support all veterans who carry the scars of war. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. God of healing, we give you thanks for healthcare workers who labor around the clock to answer cries for help. Bring wholeness to all who struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder, with anxiety, with depression, with addiction and all who long for healing in any way. We pray today for those who are listed on our prayer list. We pray for those who are suffering with illness or disease, who are undergoing treatment. We pray for those who care for them. Be with all those that we carry in our own hearts. Be with those who are often forgotten in our midst. Hear us, O God. Your justice is great. God of justice, we praise you for the feeding ministries for all meals that bring people together for nourishment and fellowship. Bless chefs, bakers, servers, dishwashers, communion assistants, and meal ministry coordinators. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all ages, we give you thanks for the saints of this congregation and for our own family members who have inspired and challenged, loved and taught us. We remember Liz Althoff, a member of Morningstar. We remember Diane Nelson, mother of Sean Nelson. Frederick Smith, husband of Marita Smith, member of Morningstar. Juanita Comer mother of Bill Comer. Jim Glover, husband of Ann Glover, member of Morningstar. Nan Morgan, wife of Reese Morgan, member of Morningstar. Steve Smariga, brother of Art Smariga. Carl Kenneth Paul, father of Sue Lytle. Diane Stegall, mother of Michelle Melton. Joetta Phillips, stepsister of Nancy and Tonshack. Manuel Edward Bell, father of Deb Sweeney. Ted Thurman, father of Cindy Karekis. David Sykes, son of Barbara and Brooke Sykes. Linda Klein, wife of Bruce Klein, member of Morningstar. Tom Burdick, 
husband of Sue Burdick, member of Morningstar. Norma Pester, grandmother of Andrew Pester. Penny Klein, mother of Bruce Klein. Luis Martinson, member of Morningstar. We remember these and all your saints, Heavenly Father, all those that we have loved and who have loved us. Wipe away the tears of our grief and lead us by their example until we may feast together on your holy mountain. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our protection and strength, we entrust all those to whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Take a moment. Please take a moment to share the peace. <laughs> Thank you. <for> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for passing the peace and for we're still um, we're still navigating that 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 passing the peace in in this day and age. Uh, sometimes it's with a fist bump, sometimes it's with a peace sign. Um, if you know them well enough, sometimes an embrace goes well. We're trying to uh, go through all those options with you to keep you safe. Thank you uh, that you've joined us for worship today. Thank you for the ministry that you are already living out. Uh, ministry is also part of our offering collection. God grants us so many gifts. Some of them we return uh, here at church so that his work might be done. Let's receive our morning offering now.
If you're not there yet, I invite you to turn to page 129 as we first have our offering prayer and then move into our communion service. 129 is a great place to be. But now let us pray. Holy God, the very earth is yours and everything in it, and yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through this, through this we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We live them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. It is indeed right, it's our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with all your saints, with the choirs of angels, with the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. the Lord's Prayer. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A feast of love is offered here for you and for all of the saints. Amen. Our communion today is offered by way of the center aisle. Thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you for that. We got, we got one. We got room for another. You want to arm wrestle? Okay. All right. Good. She would have beaten you. I know. Sorry. As we come together for communion here at Morning Star, it's open table fellowship. If you believe that Christ is present in this meal for the forgiveness of your sins, you are welcome at this table. Simply come down the center aisle. If you're receiving today, have your hands held high. 
you'll receive the wafer, then you move on to the, to the wine where it will be offered to you. Please continue a bit further, then you're welcome to lower your mask, eat your wafer, drink the wine, and you may put your cup into the little baskets on either end of the communion rail. You can then go back to your row on the outside of the aisles. Here at Morningstar, we have an open table fellowship. It means if you believe Christ is present in this meal for the forgiveness of your sins, you are welcome. Let's enjoy the feast together.
on All Saints Sunday, we also remember that every time we receive communion, every time we receive communion, it's not just with the folks that are in the room with us. Communion is one of those moments when we are united with all those who have been fed by Christ's body and blood. And so we don't have this meal by ourselves. If there's six of us in the room, it's not six. If there's 200 in the room, it's not 200. It's all those who have ever been gathered around Christ's table, all those who have been fed by his body and blood, all those who have been changed and forgiven by the grace of God that comes to us in Christ. And so today, we celebrate communion with all the saints, all our loved ones, all of them. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, at this table, you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share the gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. Amen. We are very glad you could be with us for All Saints Sunday worship. Thank you again for the wonderful response to our holiday meal bags. Thank you for those of you, um, and let's just say, for those, if you have made, put together one quilt or tied or cut pieces of fabric, would you please raise your hand if you've been involved in that? I see some hands, I see some hands, I see some hands. They look like they did something wrong. They kind of have their hands going up like they're guilty of something. <laughs> But these, these wonderful servants have made over 100 quilts, beautiful quilts. None of them are anything you wouldn't love to have in your own home because they've done it exactly that way. Every one of these quilts will be either in someone's home or someone's shelter, or they will be someone's home in a few short months. And so these have all been crafted with a lot of care and a lot of prayer. And we send them off with thanks to those who have helped and to the congregation who has made this possible. Uh, we've got a big day and a big week of ministry. Oh, pardon me. In line with those, uh, with those quilts, you see there is an announcement. Uh, those quilts don't make their way to their final destination free of charge. Um, if you are able, if you could see your way clear, we might actually have a basket back in the lobby area for basically postage on quilts. A box of five or six quilts costs about $15 uh, to get across the world. It's a good deal. But we need to make sure that happens. If you feel so inclined, uh, as those who have put forth their time and creativity to make these quilts, perhaps we can respond uh, to make sure these quilts get to their next de destination, next family members. Um, so if you can help support those, please do so today. Uh, we invite you, if you're able, to stay for our congregational hearing. It's going to be right here in the worship center in about 15 minutes. So you'll have a chance to get some coffee or uh, stretch your legs a little bit. Uh, the hearing is our chance to hear everything that's going to be presented for vote at the congregational meeting next Sunday. Uh, so if you'd like to hear more details about what you've seen in the beacon, in the newsletter, for the past few weeks, today's a great day. Also a great day to ask your questions so we can make sure everything is clear as can be as we uh, move forward with our annual meeting next week. So stay with us for the hearing. It's in a few minutes. We do have hard printed copies of the information you need to know. Uh, so don't worry about the screens not being up to snuff. We're going old school on that as well. And you'll be just fine. Please note, next week, Sunday, November 14th, Unified Worship. Please say that with me. Unified, unified worship. worship. Please say 930. 930. 930. That's a big deal. Especially a week after a time change. So you're getting it twice in a couple of weeks. So thank you for being 930 Unified Service, led by the women of the ELCA. We're going to have special music by the children who have been working on things at Music Mania and the Joyful Noise Ringers as well. A lot of special things going on that day. So please be with us at 930 for Unified Worship and then our annual meeting where you vote on things at 1045. Please let everyone in the congregation know to be present for the meeting is great. You can also sign in via Zoom. That's possible as well. Everyone will need their own sign-in device uh, so that we can count votes appropriately and make sure everyone is represented. Uh, but details are in your paperwork. Let's go forth singing our final hymn, O oh, When the Saints Go Marching In. It's not in your hymnal, so I believe paper copies have been passed out. The ushers are so good here. Let's join together in singing our final hymn.
God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life. Bless and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Led on by the saints that go before us, go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. See you in 15 minutes. Thank you.